reasons why the enemy wants us to forget where we come from. Right. One, because then you'll forget how much God deserves honor from your life. How much he deserves love. See, when I, it, it was easy for me to walk around like the cross wasn't a big deal when I didn't have an understanding of how much I needed it. Oh, yeah. right. mm. And also, it's easy for us, too, to think of when Christ died on the cross. See, we, we've been doing this for a while, some of us, and we're far from the people that we used to be. So it, it kind of gets watered down because you start thinking of Christ dying on the cross for the you that you are now. Mm. That's not who we had to hang up there for. That's right. Not to say that we sinless, but let's keep it real. He hung up there for his enemies. Mm. We were not the friends of God. Nope. We were enemies of God. Right. Dead in our right. trespasses. Right. No hope for redemption. That's right. I didn't want I didn't want nothing to do with this. The day that the Holy Spirit fell upon me and I was born again, I had denounced Christ verbally out my mouth to my father. I denounced the religion of Christianity. I denounced God. I said, yo, this is y'all thing. Don't I'm not going to church. I don't care nothing about God. God don't care nothing about me because if he did, he wouldn't have put me down here and left me where he left me. And you can't tell me that this God y'all talking about is real when all his people is so fake. Go there. Go there. That's right, Bowman. See, I come from the gang life. So I understand what it's like. I understand being guilty by association. And I understand having people that, that like, you're going to understand how our organization works based on those that represent it. So we went hard on the homies for misrepresenting. Because if you get out here acting soft, they're going to get the inclination that we all get down like that. Talk to him, talk to him. Real. But you know what tripped me out, real talk, is after I came to the Lord and I started reading his word, I'm like, yo, bro, that mentality actually comes from God. That's right. That's because right. God hates Woo. fake mm. more than anybody. Yeah. Real, baby. We're the fake ones because as much as we hate fake, we be fake about it. <laughs> Speak that thing, brother. Because we'll have an issue with somebody for doing something that we've done. Amen. We'll hold a grudge against somebody for doing the very same thing that we just did. But the enemy wants you to forget what God has done for you. So you rob God of the worship and honor and the love that he deserves. But this is another reason why he wants you to forget how far God brought you from and the pit, the depth of the pit that you were in was so that you lose hope on those that you know that are still in it. That's right. Mm. So for everybody in here, raise your hand if you got friends and family that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Look at this. Now let me say this. Because I'm sure right now if I got to talking about Jesus coming back, everybody would get so excited and we'd start rejoicing, right? Okay, that's great. But understand this. You better read that word and see what he's coming back to do. Come on. So before you start celebrating his return, you better start going and getting whoever this represents. Because once that happens, it's a wrap. That's right. For whoever this represents, he's not coming back. The lamb was slain. The lion came out the tomb. He's not playing around. They don't, the word of God don't refer to him as the king of terrors for no reason. The gospel is the good news for those who receive it. It is terrible news for those who reject it. Right. Come on, man. You better go get them. Yeah. Bring in the sheep, man. Because the field is white. I'm telling you, I'm out here. People, they, they tired.
tired. They broke down. They beat down. God has, has, has tilled the soil in so many people's hearts. Go get them. But you already, we be making it up in our mind what they're going to say before we even talk to them. Because we punks. We get punked by Satan constantly when it comes to ministering the gospel. But you got to ask yourself this question. Are you better than them? So what makes you think God could do it for you, but he can't do it for them? Because you're not here because you made a good decision. You're here because he's gracious to his children. That's it. Because you didn't choose him. He chose you. Facts. That's the word. Facts. Like I said, I had rejected Christ. And from that place, I walked into my room. Tormented by Satan, put a gun to my head, and the Holy Spirit fell upon me, and I was born again. Wow. That's how I got saved. Yeah. Nobody preached no sermon to me. I didn't pray no special prayer. Mm. The Holy Spirit fell upon me, and it wrecked me, and it changed my heart. And I've never been the same. Praise God. Praise God. So you can't tell me what God can and can't do. What he will and won't do. And I ask God so many times because I've made a million mistakes doing this thing. Why me? Why did you give all of this to me? And straight up, you know what he told me? I was sliding through the hood one day asking him that. And this is all he said to me. He said, because you're the one they said I couldn't do it with. <laughs> Look stupid. Back, so That's why I'm using you, bro. So it ain't about you. So just say thank you. So that's all I'm gonna encourage y'all to do. It's not about you. That's right, homie. Because this is what happens. I'm gonna tell you something. This is what happens when you make the gospel about you. You'll do something like this. Preach. May 28th. Excuse me, no, this was probably at the time. It was about May 25th, it had to be. 2008. I'm sliding through my city to my little brother's neighborhood. I slide up. He's got a pistol in his hand, blood on his t-shirt. Somebody laid out in the grass. I slide up on him, tell him to jump in the car, <coughs> take him around a couple corners, pull up, and I start getting at him. I'm like, bro, you out here tripping? What is you doing? Yeah, mm. yeah. We start going back and forth. The Lord tells me, tell him about me. Thanks. Now, I was living half in, half out, struggling. You know, trying to serve God, but still trying to get paid. And I didn't even, this is the thing, I, never, I didn't have financial problems. I just had a faith problem. That was it. And, and every believer in here understand that. Amen. No one in here who is under the king Amen. has a financial problem. That's right. You either have a faith problem or you're a bad steward. Facts. 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 Check your bank accounts. Keep it real, man. Don't lie, bro. So I'm going back and forth with my little brother. And instead of telling him about Jesus Christ, because I'm going through this thing in my mind like, nah, man, I just did this, and he knows I'm doing this, and well, I'm about to go do this, and so I'm like, look, bro, God got a plan for you, and it's not this. This is what I told him. I said, give me three weeks. I'm going to go handle some business. I'm going to come back. When I come back, I'm going to go get us out the hood, bro. We're going to go get a hotel room. I got something I need to talk to you about. We're going to get out of here for a few days, man, and I'm going to talk to you about something. I and he's like, for sure, blood is good. And I told 
The biggest lie I've ever told in my life to my little brother before he got out my car. I love you. Mm. It's the last thing I said to him. Was I love you. But love tells the truth. I leave town. Three days later, I get a phone call. I'm in a trap spot. My homie's whipping crack in the kitchen. I'm in the alley on the phone. My baby mom's got in a car accident. My twin died. She give birth to him, boom, dead in the court. Okay. A few hours later, I get a phone call. They're really talking about my brother got shot twice in his chest, half his head blown off. He's laying in the street, and they talk me through his death on the phone. My brother died three days after that, while I was on the phone. And I have to live with this for the rest of my life. Now, God is sovereign, and where he went is between him and the Lord. But what I do know is I missed my call that day. Mm, real talk. Why? Because I made the gospel about me. God did not say, tell him about how your relationship with me is going. He said, bruh, you're already in my way. So you tell him what I did for him. Amen. He already knows you tripping. But you need to talk to him about me so he don't get me and you confused. Facts. And I didn't do it. So for those of you, let me let you know some of them secret sins in your life, that closet stuff you're doing, you better air it out, man, and confess it before the Lord and repent. Because in the moment when it's time, when it's go time, that's going to be the thing the devil uses to freeze you up. That's right. And tomorrow is not promised. And you do not want to know what it feels like to live the rest of your life knowing that you had an opportunity to tell your family about Christ. And you didn't. And if I had to judge based on the life he was in, he died gangbanging. He hit somebody up, they hit him up, they got out the car, started tussling, my little bro was banging him, bro pulled out a pistol and smoked him. He died a gangbanger. I know, I know where that, where, where that ends, but I'm not his final judge. But I'm also not fake enough to say, that everybody goes to heaven just because you love them. Facts. Come on, man. Preach. We sat in funerals and told a lot of lies. Real talk. To ourselves about people we cared about. So I'm just up here, man, to just tell y'all and compel y'all and beg some of y'all, man. Get it right. For your sake and for the sake your friends and family that need to see Jesus in you. We are the body of God on earth. That's what the body is. Christ not God? Mm. To be the body of Christ, you're the body of God. You're his hands and feet. We're not just to represent God. We're to reflect him yeah. to this world. To make the invisible visible. Mm. So when they meet you, they're not never supposed to really meet you. Yeah. They're supposed to meet Jesus. Yeah. Walking like Jesus would. Telling the truth like Jesus would. Loving people and forgiving people and having grace and mercy like Jesus would. But also calling it out like it is like Jesus would. Right. Right. Mm. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's get it.